Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Serving the Community. My name is Trisha Stetzel. I'm the owner of Results Extreme Business Solution and also the founder of Serving the Community podcast. The purpose of this podcast is to highlight people and organizations in our community that are giving back or volunteering to make our community our state, our country, or even the world, a better place to live. I'm super excited about my guest today. She's my friend. We've been doing a lot of work together recently. May Francis, welcome to Serving the Community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Trish. Thank you for I would having me. Absolutely. And I would love for you to talk a little bit about your business, what you do for work, and then let's jump into directly after that, how you're volunteering in the community. Okay, I am Mae Francis, owner of Looking Up Consulting, and we uh, design and facilitate workshops, speeches, and mentorships that bring knowledge as well as inspire. Uh, our signature speech this year uh, would probably be named uh, Diversity and Inclusion and also Walking Through Difficulty, those two, actually. And um, same with the workshops. We also do some things that's catered to uh, self-esteem and building uh, the next generation. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like you you give back to the community through your own work, which I think is amazing. So uh, very excited today though, to talk about your involvement with Big Brothers and Big Sisters. So let's dive into that. You were telling me before we started the show that there are different chapters. So let's start there and then kind of hone in on your experience with Big Brother and Big Sister. So what I know uh, about it is that people in different states have Big Brother, Big Sister program. And uh, it is a program where uh, it allows us to assist the next generation in being successful. It's that simple. I think um, the, the place where I serve is Big Brother, Big Sister, Gulf Coast. And um, their office is located there in Galveston. And I love their theme um, for this year. They say potential is everywhere, just that simple. And so um, kind of what we do, uh, we are allowed, they, and they go through a, uh, a screening process okay. for, uh, for the bigs, like I'm considered a big, right? And the little sister is referred to as little. That's their language when they speak about bigs and littles. Um, and so you get an opportunity, they, uh, they screen you and they're running all these background searches on you uh, when you express interest and come in, that's part of your interviewing process. And it takes a couple of days to get the whole thing done. And then they try to match you according to personality. Okay. Yeah, and so I think uh, from what I understand about it, there is a, uh, a model that's put out there for Big Brother, Big Sister Incorporated, and then regionally, uh, board of directors run it according to what the main needs are in their particular area. And we have an amazing uh, board of directors also for um, Galveston area, Galveston County area. I've had an opportunity to uh, serve that board with looking up to do some team building training with them as well as the staff for Big Brother, Big Sister. So I'm, I'm kind of liking them. I'm tied in with them in a couple of different ways and I really enjoy. That's amazing. So how long have you been volunteering with them? So uh, I probably have been volunteering for more than 15 years I've been volunteering. Uh, just doing things as, uh, as a representative actually of Ashland and I would support whatever they were doing. Um, and then three years ago, uh, I decided that I wanted to step it up. I wanted to um, become a big, and there's two different ways to be a big. You can be a person that's a person of influence. And at that time before COVID, this is a person that maybe once a month you did a lunch break or something like that with the student and you, know, you guys get a chance to uh, to share and talk through those times. And then there was like the next level one where you actually committed to things outside of school and you spend um, you know, unlimited 
time together, a couple of times a month, you know, outings, different things like that. And I opted to do that one. And um, so I started, my little was actually 12, about to make 13 when we got started and she's 16 now. She's actually gonna be 17 in June. And so we've had, you know, we're having the opportunity to do uh, from middle school to graduation. And I am absolutely, uh, absolutely loving it. She is, she's amazing. She's an amazing young lady. Yeah. Um, so do you, as a big, do you take on more than uh, one little at a time or how does that work? I think maybe people do. For me, um, I only I only have the one little. Yeah, I only have the one little. And, um, you know, you, you have, I think they can be as young as six years old. Wow. And so when we were having the initial interview, I was like, no, nah, you can't, don't bring me with a person that's six. I don't want to shock them and I don't want them to shock me. <laughs> you got to get me somebody that's older, right? That can ride with me. Yes. So, um, so it's, it's, it's just a, it's a great, uh, it's a great program and it's a perfect way. Like for me, I feel like I assist her mom in helping her to become everything that she can be. And so I think that's the most important part is establishing that on the front end. I actually, you have meetings with the, as a big, I had meetings with the mom before I had meetings with her, before I ever got to meet her. I had two meetings with the mom and we had a chance to talk just to make sure that we were on the same page. And what was important to me uh, and I'm, you can agree, being a mom, when you have uh, a child that is that age, you want to make sure that people are saying what you are saying. Yeah. yeah. You don't want a new doctrine coming in from anywhere, right? I need you echoing what I am echoing. And that was the thing that was most important to me and making sure that, uh, that I never take her for granted. I ask permission. I never tell her what I'm going to do. I ask her if it is okay, because we added some things to our, our relationship uh, has, has grown over the time. So she's more like family with us. So she's, she, she's over uh, every Christmas, she comes over okay. with my kids and she, you know, with the rest of my family. When my daughter got married, she's at the, at the parties and that kind of thing. So uh, when, when we lost, everything in the flood, the first family that bought us a full meal was that family. Wow. So we have, we have meshed. We have really, uh, we have really meshed, but I follow the rules. I follow the rules because I still think that is the most important thing. If I am a person that's supposed to be like um, a navigator for her, she needs to see me know how to have a good time, make the most of any situation, but following the rules, staying within the guidelines. And so, and so we do that. And one of the rules is that you don't spend the night together while you are big and little. And so uh, we have kept, we've spent so much time together, but that is not going to happen. I told her when she makes 18, we're going to have all nighters. <laughs> we're going to do an all-nighter. We're going to take a trip somewhere, visit the kids or something like that. And I want to be able to take her with me, but we will not break any rule that is put in place. And I think that's important for her to see. Absolutely. Well, and I, I can only imagine that relationship that just sounds wonderful. And especially after all these years, right. They yeah. do become, they become family. So tell me why you got involved with this organization in the first place. And I, I understand that Ashlyn had um, a relationship, right. And that may be where it came from, but uh, not just why, but why do you stay right with this organization? What is it that you're getting out of being a big so, um, so for me, I love the next generation and I probably taught Sunday school to the generation. Like, you know, that's an ongoing, that's a joke now when my kids, friends come around because some of them I actually taught in the Sunday school class, right? So there's all mm -hmm. kinds of inside little stuff happening all the time for probably more than 30 years. 
Um, I taught Sunday school. So I've always been in love with the next generation. And I feel like the thing that is most important is that they know who they are and that they're here for a definite reason. So I, I got, I became active in Big Brother, Big Sister to have a more uh, deliberate impact on that. I want her self-esteem to soar. I want to see her um, get a college education or whatever else it is that she wants to know uh, and, and explaining to her. And she, she probably, she's gonna have jokes too now because like these years, I normally do this back to school program. Well, she and her sister have been made to come to those ever since, uh, you know, ever since we met. So she knows what's being taught in those things too. But I mean, like I on purpose put it that way. I wanted them to understand that they have an amazing gift on the inside, how to take care of it, what kind of behavior has a negative impact on it versus a positive impact. And just, um, just exposing her to everything I know about, you know, um, colleges, whatever I can think of to show her, taking her to uh, fashion shows and just showing her what's good and what's right, you know? Um, yeah. And so that keeps me on my toes. I'm telling you the first time we were in the car together and she said to me, um, you know, you, you make me want to uh, dress up and do, and I, and I start thinking to myself, oh my God, Am I driving with both of my hands on the wheel? What am I doing? I don't need to run through that red light on the end. Like I need to stop. I need don't need to brace the stop sign. You know, it's like, it's been a long time since anybody's been watching me. <laughs> yeah, let me rein it in and make sure that I'm saying it right and I'm doing it right because I want to demonstrate that uh, to her. And in the process, we've fallen in love with her and they've fallen in love with us. And, just to have a relationship with her mom where, you know, things happening in, in the community, her mom checks in on us, we check in on her. It's just, it's great. It's great. That's wonderful. Uh, I want to be your little. <laughs> yeah, it, it, is, it is absolutely great. It is. That's wonderful. So talk to me about how people can get involved. Uh, let's say there may be a family who would like to get their little into the program or someone wants to volunteer to be a big. What's the best way to get involved? Okay, awesome. So um, people that want to want their child to become a little, you do it through school. You do it through school. Okay. There are uh, forms and information there that you can get from them and they will connect you um, and, and do the match. And what was amazing is that me and my little were so closely matched. I mean, I met this little 12 year old that um, that was just like a little glam monster. And I was just like, oh, this is <laughs> too cute. I, this is amazing. She was never shy. Like from day one, Chatty Kathy, Chatty Kathy, Chatty Kathy would ask me anything. And that's exactly what, that's exactly what you want to see, right? Yeah. Um, and then they, they are located, the office is located on 61st Street in Galveston. Uh, the contact person is Helga Patterson. She is the person that's running the program now. And also uh, if you look up Gulf Coast, Big Brother, Big Sister, all of the information that you need is inside there. Uh, when you tell them that you would like to be a part, uh, they invite you in. You have a, a day of interviewing. You fill out all of your uh, paperwork and it is quite a bit because I mean, you know, their, their biggest concern is the safety of the kids, right? And so um, they also are gonna do a complete background check on you. And that'll take a little bit for it to come back. But when everything comes back, they start doing a match, and that was such a um, that was such a fun part. We had our meetings right there in um, in McDonald's in Dickinson. That's where we had our meetings at. You know, it's open environment, right? And so um, and so it was great. So I, I think I had a a really uh, a really good match. Um, we are so because now you don't have to stay with the same student each time. 
Okay. I requested to stay with the same student. I didn't want to change and she didn't want to change. And so we like on purpose uh, matched. And I was thinking about that the other day. I, I may go for one more run of it, even after she graduates and comes out of the program, because I really liked the idea of, of, uh, of just enhancing someone's life if I can. No. That's amazing. Hey, I'm so excited that you came on the show. And you know, you and I have never met in person. It is right? 20 after all. Yes. And I didn't know that you were involved with Big Brothers and Big Sisters until a few months ago. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Not only do you serve through your work that you do uh, in your business, but you yes. also serve through your volunteer work. And thank you so much for being with me today, May. You're welcome. Thank you for the invitation. Super Absolutely. Special. And thank, thank you. you to all of our listeners. That concludes this week's podcast of Serving the Community. Thank you so much.